Good morning, guys. I am coming in on the front end of this vlog because I just finished editing this vlog and the sound is terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. So I shot, I shot a lot of B-roll throughout the week of things that I was doing, chores I was doing around the house um, to get pr prepared for this upcoming harvest season. And then I came out yesterday to the garden to talk about all that B-roll while I was working in the garden with you guys. It was this whole plan, this whole thing. And I was using a new microphone, um, a wireless microphone to try that out. Well, it didn't work out very well. The sound was terrible. Chase was cleaning his truck at the time. I didn't realize the vacuum cleaner was going to be so dang loud, but my mic picked up everything. It didn't block out the wind very well, and it was breezy yesterday. And overall, the sound quality is just extremely poor. Um, so I, I'm apologizing in advance. I decided I did not want to reshoot an over 20 minute long video. <laughs> So I'm just gonna put it out there and just wanted to let you guys know I'm sorry in advance for the poor sound quality. I hope you enjoy it anyways. There's good information and good content in there. And I will have a garden tour video out by the end of this coming week. Today is Sunday and I should be, have a garden tour coming out by Friday. So, disclaimer, got some kinks to work out with my new microphone, but please enjoy the vlog. Hey guys, and welcome back. First off, I want to say I am sorry for the late video. This week has gotten away from me. I have been doing a ton of stuff to prepare for the incoming harvest that we are going to be getting because the garden is doing fantastic. I'm also trying out a new mic today, but we are in the garden today. I have a few plants to put in the ground. I started some more of this, was it 505 or 5 something Mizuna mustard? I'll, I'll put it. Down below. These are the seeds that Baker Creek sent me and I had some terrible germination on the first round of seeds that I planted. I was using crappy soil, fixed it, got my fox farm and now I have some beautiful mustard, albeit was eaten by the chickens a little bit because <laughs> it sat in the garage for about five minutes and they went crazy. But while I have been doing all of this work on the property and in the house, I did a lot of recording, just not talking to you while I was recording. So we're gonna plant these plants in the garden today. I'm gonna to show you a little bit of the garden, but not the whole thing because I do have a tour coming up. And I'm gonna give you footage of everything that I have done this past week to prepare for the upcoming harvest season. I don't really have room for these plants, but I did pull out some onions that were along this row, if you all remember. So I think I'll put them here at least the mustard. I also started several um, tomato plants just because I was preparing for the worst this year with curly top virus and the beet leaf hopper. So far, I've only pulled out one tomato plant that didn't do real well. And I don't even think it was curly top, it was just a failure to thrive. Uh, but a Paul Robeson, if y'all are familiar with that variety, I haven't been able to grow it for the last three years and frankly the only reason I planted seeds this year was because I still had them. <laughs> as long as I have the seeds I'll try and plant them but I know that Paul Robeson just does not work for my area. Uh, kind of like the Amish paste if y'all were with me last year. I'm not growing the Amish paste again. If I have more Paul Robeson seeds next year I'll probably start them because they're there but it's not a variety that I plan on actually coming to fruition in my garden. But most of the other tomato plants, well, all of the other tomato plants are doing really, really well. Um, except for this one. This is, let's see what this is. Of course, the one tomato plant I wanna show you, I can't find the tag for, but I'm fairly certain this is an Isis candy cherry because this is the only cherry variety I planted this year. And it's just, it's looking very sickly compared to my other plants. I'm not sure it's gonna make it and it has not produced me any fruit. But my other Isis candy cherry over here looks marginally better and is producing fruit. This is my fourth tomato of the season. Mm. Oh, it's so good. 
All right, enough showing you the garden. <laughs> Let's plant this mustard. This is why I really got this new mic so that you guys could like watch my whole thing and I could talk to you without having to yell <laughs> across to the camera. I can just conversate with you because my mic's right here. I, I'm really hoping this mic is working. <laughs> You're getting sound. Oh no, it's gonna be so. So one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, that a lot of people don't think about at the beginning of the gardening season is rotating your old vegetables and herbs, whatever you produce, and getting them out of your kitchen or your closet or wherever you're keeping them as your new harvest is coming in. So this isn't a requirement. Um, I think it's good practice just because herbs and vegetables and anything you preserve can, you know, lose its nutrients and taste and just general quality over time. Um, but it, it's, it's definitely something to think about before you start bringing this harvest in. I know I have jars and jars of dried peppers from last year and I'm slowly going through them, but I don't, I don't want to start harvesting peppers from my garden right now and start preserving them and then get them mixed up with the old stuff. I do want to go through all of my old stuff before I start bringing in peppers in earnest from the garden. So that's a lot of what I did this week was going through all of my old herbs and um, peppers and frozen I still have frozen tomatoes in the freezer, I know. But I'm going through all that stuff and trying to get it out just as my harvest is starting to come in. I've got peppers coming in, not really tomatoes yet, uh, but I've got a ton of herbs coming in, especially calendula. All right, I moved to another pepper bed because I ran out of room. Um, but I started this week off with uh, clearing out the onions from the barn. A couple videos ago I did an onion and garlic harvest and I showed you guys how to harvest and cure both onions and garlic and those onions have been curing for a couple of weeks and they were mostly dry. There are a couple that I'm, I'm still leaving out to, to finish off the curing process. But in general, they were mostly dry, so I got them out of the barn and took them into the garage to begin the final process of my onion harvest, which is cutting off the tops and the roots so that I can put them up for storage. So if you're still in the process of curing your onions, you just want to wait until the tops are just completely dried up, like crumbly. You can take the top in your hand and like squish it and it just falls apart like dried paper. So at that point, I mean, if it's coming apart just when you touch it, you can just use your hand to brush off the roots or brush off the tops. Otherwise, you can just cut them. Um, and you're just, gonna, you're just gonna cut them off until they look like what they look like in the store. No tops, no roots coming out. Um, and, and you're done. What I did was I just made sure all of the ones that I ended up cutting the tops off, they were dry and as I said, there are a couple that were still green, so I separated them and I'm leaving them with the garlic to dry out more because the garlic is not finished yet. And then after that, I put them all in just a, an open air basket and I left them outside for a couple more days so that I made sure when I cut the tops off, if there was anything like wet still at the base where it meets the onion, that completely dries out before I put them in bags to hang in my storage closet. Because that's how I store my onions, as I keep them in a hallway closet in cloth or linen bags. Um, you want them in a breathable area and in the dark. So that's the best place in my house to keep my onions, where it's also a stable temperature. No great temperature fluctuations, not too hot, not too cold. Um, and they're, they're dried out now. I still have to bag them up and put them away but I have my onion harvest completely taken care of and they are now going to be stored for as long as possible. We'll see how fast I go through these onions, but they will be stored hopefully for several months and I will have onions for several months. I also started cycling through my old peppers, uh, not old, they're last year's peppers, more often than I have been before. We've been using those all winter to make hot sauces or put them into soups and stews, just whole 
But what I have put away from last year are gonna be my pimiento de padrone pepper, Thai hot sugar rush peach, and then various red and green chilies like hatch green chili and hatch red chili. And they're all separated uh, in different jars, but for my purposes this day, I took the sugar rush peach and some padrone and Thai peppers. And what I do with the padrone and Thai peppers is I actually use them quite often to make a hot pepper spice. So I just take the dried up peppers, put them into our coffee grinder, make them into a powder, and put them in a jar. And we use that hot pepper spice on everything. It's, it's kind of like crushed red pepper that you would use or some sort of, you know, just chili powder. We just put it in everything. It's delicious. I like the heat from the Thai pepper because it's a little bit hotter than the Padron, but I like the rich flavor of the Padron pepper. So it's about a 50-50 mix. It's a wonderful spice. And that's mainly what we use those two peppers for. Now the Sugar Rush Peach, today I tried something new and I ended up rehydrating these peppers so that I could blend them with the tomatoes and make a hot sauce. It was delicious. It was a little watery. It was my first time making a hot sauce in this way, uh, but it was really, really good. And I'm probably gonna end up doing that particular recipe with the rest of the frozen tomatoes that I have in the freezer because I've got a couple gallon size bags. I did not get around to canning any tomato sauce this winter, unfortunately. A lot of the tomatoes that I saved from last year were this variety called the Estiva. The Estiva is an F1 hybrid from Johnny Seeds, and I didn't buy any more this year. I just used the same packet that I had from last year. But they're supposed to be, I mean, they're a hybrid. They were bred to be a little bit more heat tolerant than other varieties. And they were an outstanding, outstanding variety last year, as well as the Grand Marshal, which is also an F1 hybrid from Johnny Seeds, which I also grew again this year. But they were both fantastic tomato varieties, and that's mostly where, mostly those tomatoes, the Estivas, are the ones in my freezer from last year. But if y'all have never frozen tomatoes, like in preparation to either can them or use them, it's an absolute game changer. Once you freeze them, well, First off, for the freezing process, you need to core them and score the bottom with an X just so they're easier to peel when they thaw out. But all I do is take them out of the bag, stick them in a warm um, bowl of water. If you want, you can, if you need to thaw them faster, you can keep the water running, but usually I'm not in a hurry. And they just, it's beautiful. They just come apart. The skins slip off so easily but on top of the skins just falling off, which is wonderful in itself. The meat of the tomato thaws before the seeds and the juice inside. So if you time it right, if you let the meat thaw out after you've peeled the skin, you can take the tomato, open it up, and the seeds will come out in like a block of ice because they're the last to thaw. So it's just super, super easy <laughs> to process your tomatoes if you don't have a, a specific tomato processor um, to do it the frozen way and that's what I did I took an entire gallon of tomatoes thawed them uh, deseeded them peeled them and then I boiled them down for about 30 minutes once the tomatoes and the peppers were done I blended them all together and then strained it and I had you know a, a chunk free hot sauce it was wonderful, super easy, and the frozen method is by far just, in my opinion, the easiest way to take care of your overabundance of tomatoes. So that got me through a good amount of stuff, but something I really, really need to get through quickly are my herbs. I definitely try to rotate my herbs as often as possible, just because my herbs are mainly used for medicinal purposes. I, I do make tea blends, uh, but for the medicinal purposes, I want the most high quality herb I can get to use it as medicine. So I am always rotating my herbs as long as they're growing in the garden. Right now, <laughs> what I always have growing in the garden is gonna be yarrow, calendula, and catnip. Oh, and mint. Um, but my mint is a little finicky. It doesn't love 110 degree days. So it kind of dies out in the middle of the summer. I really only harvest it in the spring and in the fall. But I am getting buku amounts of calendula right now. 
so I'm, I had to, I actually gave away a bunch of calendula that I had from last year. I've already made my tea blends and my tinctures from it. So I'm just trying to get through all the old stuff so that I can use those jars and put fresh, fresh new herbs in. So with a lot of my old catnip, my mint, holy basil, and calendula, I actually made a bedtime tea. I have a video on this bedtime tea. It's wonderful. It's my favorite thing ever. Oh, and chamomile. How could I forget the chamomile for my bedtime tea? Um, but I just took those old herbs, some of them, and just made a tea blend to put in the kitchen so I get through it. And since I've been harvesting a bunch of yarrow, catnip, calendula, and my chamomile is starting to come in, I'm going to rotate those herbs. What I'm not rotating this year, or yet, is my holy basil. I have about, uh, I would say about a pint jar worth of holy basil left but I had almost zero germination from my holy basil seeds this year, and I have one plant that actually came from a cutting from my hydroponics garden when I had holy basil over the winter. And it's struggling, it's, it's not doing terribly right now, but I'm a little worried that I might not get a good holy basil harvest this year, which I really, really love making holy basil tea. So I might end up purchasing it dried from some herb store like Mountain Rose Herbs. And just to give myself a little bit more work, because I don't have enough already, <laughs> I went on a book club retreat over the weekend with my friends, and we stayed at a house that, a, a friend's mother's house, that had a huge apricot tree in the backyard. It was glorious. There were hundreds of apricots on this very, very mature tree, and she let me just go nuts. <laughs> I brought home three like Walmart plastic bags full to the brim of apricots and then realized that I needed to do something with all these apricots. <laughs> I'm not really a jelly person. We don't we don't eat a lot of jelly in this house so I, I looked for some canning recipes in my ball preserving book. I just didn't see anything that I felt like making and I also didn't want the added work of canning them. So what I did was just have them. I washed them all, I halved them, pitted them, and I did about a 50-50 split of frozen apricots and dried apricots. The dried apricots are gonna be great. I do like drying fruit. We don't eat a whole lot of trail mix, but it's nice to have on hand as a snack, especially because we do a lot of camping and hunting. What I am excited for is the frozen batch of apricots because we do a lot of protein smoothies or just fruit smoothies for the kids as a dessert. So those will actually get used very well in that way, frozen. But I, I, did, I did about a 50-50 split just to give myself some options. And I also found, oh, what was it? It was like an apricot bourbon barbecue sauce. I know, it sounds delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> I found this recipe and it called for dried apricots, which is also why I dried half of them because I definitely want to make that sauce. <laughs> so that is what I've been doing all week. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to record some footage for you guys. It was just very hectic. I'm also working a couple more shifts than usual this week because we've got some people out at work. It's been busy. <laughs> we also just got the kids for the summer. We get the kids for a month in the summertime and that's also when we end up doing our yearly trip to Missouri to see Chase's family. So we'll be doing that here shortly. I'm hoping to, to get some footage in Missouri this year, uh, but we'll see You know how it is. You start having fun with friends and family and you forget the camera's there. So we'll try, um, but it's, it's been hectic and I appreciate you guys for understanding. I'm only a couple days late on this video, uh, but it's a beautiful morning, it's cloudy. <laughs> It's a little breezy, but I'm hoping this mic isn't picking up too much wind. It was just a gorgeous morning to get out here in the garden and talk to you guys about what I've been doing for the week. I kept trying to get out here um, the past couple days, but I've been just working a bunch in the mornings, like doing a lot of stuff. And by the time I have the time to get out in the garden and like record something, it's 100 degrees. The garden seems to be doing pretty okay with it though. I forgot I wanted to show you guys this squash. Prepare yourselves. Um, this squash does not have a name. It's not a known variety because it is from the uh, Maxima. I believe it's a, it's either a Maxima or a Machado variety. 
uh, but it's from Going to Seed. Um, guys, I've talked about Going to Seed a lot. I will link them down below, check them out. It's an amazing uh, nonprofit organization. Regardless, whew, squash is crazy. Y'all, this is one plant. There, all the way over to the fourth row, and all the way back here. I am certain the camera does not convey the actual size of this singular plant, but it is massive. I mean, it's even difficult to just walk around here, but I've got a small fruit starting here. I'm not sure if it's a good fruit or if it's one that's gonna peter out and die because it wasn't pollinated right, but that's what I can show you about how it's starting to grow. And unfortunately, it's squash bug season. I have been out here every morning for the past four days, I believe, picking squash bugs. I got on them early though. I have been checking daily for several weeks and the first day that I saw them, I spent 30 minutes out here just picking off squash bugs. It, there weren't that many, I think there were less than 10 um, because they had just gotten to my garden but I think I'm getting a good handle on it. I picked some this morning and I only got four. I've got my little squash bug picking station here with a cup of water I usually put soap in and then my tweezers. I don't like touching them with my hands. I'm not, a, I'm not really a bug person. Um, but they also, they release a smell. I don't know if, I don't know if y'all have ever smelled squash bug stink. It's weird. It's sweet. And it's, it's an, a sour kind of, it's an odd, odd smell. The chickens don't even like them. It's kind of like, they're like little stink bugs. But so far it's been working. Every morning I come out here, I'm picking off less and less. And I've gotten a couple egg patches on the bottoms of leaves so far. I'm just hoping that I'm keeping up with them because the size of that squash, guys, I cannot wait to get a fruit off of that thing and save the seeds. It's, it's the, like, it's, it's doing so well here. I've never had such a beautiful, gorgeous species of squash do so well. Like, that's one plant. And it's loving the climate. Look at this thing. I keep moving these off of the black plastic because it's got to be like 150 degrees on there. It just keeps crawling back. It wants more. It loves it. It cannot get enough of my garden. I just couldn't be happier. And not all of, I, I planted several um, going to seed varieties of squash. Not all of them did well, but the point is finding that one seed that's like, yes, this is where I want to grow. This is the kind of area and climate that I like. And I found one and I just really need that squash to produce me a viable, just one. I just need one squash to come off of that plant so I can save the seeds. <sighs> I'm so excited. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you. Just one. I'm not doing a tour today. <laughs> But look at this little tiny eggplant. Oh my goodness, it's adorable. This is the Ping Tung eggplant. I got the seeds from Baker Creek. I didn't choose this for any particular reason. I believe it was like a softer, less pungent variety. So it's like just a very easy variety to eat. I don't have a lot of eggplant recipes. I don't think I've even ever purchased an eggplant at the store and brought it home to cook it. I don't know what to do with them. I know baba ganoush exists. I've had it before. I like it. Um, but we're going to figure it out this year because I'm going to have a ton of eggplant. But it's so adorable. I need to show you guys that. Okay. We are done. I'm not going to show you any more of this garden. And I assure you there will be a garden tour out this week. Likely... Thursday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday-ish, my usual posting time. It just, I won't make it a week from now because I am late on this video and I apologize. But thank you guys for joining me today. This was a bit vloggy, um, a bit all over the place. <laughs> it's been a long week, <laughs> but I will see you guys soon for a full garden tour of this place. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Catch you guys on the next one.